You're listening to The Human Resource. Today, we're going to talk about legal documents. I, I know. Most of what HR does has some element of legality around it. But it's interesting. I, I so often run across a client who will say, oh, well, you know, I drafted that document or I drafted that agreement off of a form or a, a document that I used at a previous employer or my ultimate favorite. Oh, well, I pulled that off the internet. And <laughs> okay, I know each of you have heard that at some point. And, and, and when we're talking about human resources, remember, if you've been watching the show or the one of our different um, aspects of the show over the past five years, you've heard us say over and over and over again, surround yourself with people who know more than you. Surround yourself with experts. And when it comes to legal documents, there is no other expert than a labor law attorney. And what I want to talk about are, are what I consider the top five documents that you should be going to your labor law attorney for. Now, I consider myself a, a, a good consultant, and I consider myself knowledgeable, but not even a good consultant can lock a good legal document for you. And after all, if you're going to think about a legal document, if you want to have something enforceable, you need to make sure it's enforceable and that it is done in such a way that there is no question and that it has the credibility that a legal document should. And many times one of these documents will come up in a possible termination. You want to put one of these back in front of someone at the time that they're separating from employment. So let's talk about making sure that these documents are just solid with the guidance and uh, direction of a labor law attorney. My very first suggestion is the employment contract. Now, remember, there's a difference between an employment contract and an offer letter. Offer letters, they're an agreement. It's, it's how you establish the terms of employment with a new hire or maybe someone who's moving into a new position or a promotion. But it's, it's you know, how are we going to work together? And offer letters focus around at-will employment versus an employment contract, which is far more constraining. This means that you're basically, as an employer, obligating yourself or guaranteeing a relationship with this new hire for a period of time. You're telling them, look, you do this, I'll do that. Here are the terms. Do you agree? Sign on the dotted line. Employment contracts are far more detailed than an offer letter. And some will have at-will employment in them, but most don't. And this is where you need that labor law attorney to step in and help you craft the appropriate agreement, the appropriate contract with the individual you're about to work with. So number one, the employment contract. How about number two, non-competes, non-solicitation agreements. Guys, if we haven't just talked about this in any real detail, it's because this topic across the country is changing at the speed of light at the state level. In fact, let me give you an idea. I have one client with employees from Hawaii to New Jersey. You've heard me mention them before. I love this group been working with them for nine years, and they have four different non-compete, non-solicitation agreements because each of the states that their employees are located in have different requirements. Oh, it used to be that we could just use the same non-compete, non-solicitation agreement in any state, but that has changed. In fact, one state in the country won't even allow you to offer or request or demand a non-compete, 
non-solicitation agreement. And I am confident without a doubt, knowing the administration that we have right now in the White House, that that in itself is going to continue to change. So if you have a non-compete, non-solicitation that you are currently using, please get it back in front of your labor law attorney and ask them, could you please review this? Here's where my employees reside. Remember, it's not where the corporate office is. It's where your employees reside. And have them review the language that you're using. And if they, if so be it, if they have to offer another format for a particular area, use it. Non-compete, non-solicitations are serious. You want to make that enforceable. If someone leaves you and tries to take their, the information they've gained or the experience that you gave them or provided for them to one of your competitors, you're going to pull this out at the time of termination and remind them that's not an option. Nor do you want them to take your, to your team with them. Non-compete, non-solicitations. Number two. Number three is the confidentiality agreement. With the National Labor Relations Board having the, uh, I don't want to say constraints, but the guidelines that employers cannot prohibit employees from speaking on compensation, work conditions, and terms of employment, many of your confidentiality statements are not compliant. And in many cases, and and a lot of my clients, uh, we use both the confidentiality language in the handbook, as well as a standalone confidentiality agreement. So I have two signatures proving that the employee knows full well what is considered confidential information and not to exercise or use it. So Take a look at your language that you're currently using because confidentiality is a common, common policy in handbooks. But definitely, if you want that to be enforceable, make sure that it's not crossing over the NLRB's guidelines and that it is enforceable. Then we've we've got the severance agreements. And oh my gosh, please, 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 Do not believe or even think that you can create one of these on your own. I am seeing more severance agreements being used here in the past few months than I have in a couple years. And I get it. Severance agreements provide a soft landing for someone. If the employment relationship is not working out, if this individual needs to be exited from the company, okay, if you want to offer a severance agreement, great. But my gosh, if, you've, if you haven't really been educated or um, if you're not really familiar with all the terms in a properly written severance agreement, you really don't know what they're used for. Severance agreements even come with timelines. And most people who try to create these on their own don't understand that employees get 21 days to review or they get seven days to retract. This is all, again, legal language, and only a labor law attorney can properly guide you on this particular agreement. Again, the administration that we have wants to see this language changed and altered, pulling out certain parts of it, constraining other parts, and you and, I are, you and I cannot defend that in court, but a labor law attorney can. So please, severance agreements, if you need to use it, please do not pull one out from two years ago, not even a year ago. And then the, the fifth one, I think I'm going to surprise you on this one. Although there are lots and lots of legal documents that HR uses, The one I would love to see you put before your attorney is the tuition reimbursement agreement. Now, here's why. Some people believe (laughs) that they can just say, hey, I'll pay for this course, and if you leave in six months, you owe me 100%. Or I need you to stay with the company for two years, and then we'll start gradually working that payback off. 
And what happens is if it's not properly written, that tuition reimbursement agreement can actually look like a, a contract of servitude. Look, you, you don't want to look like you're holding your employees who should have been employed at will under an offer letter if they're not on a contract. Um, they, you cannot stand there and say, you can't leave me for a period of time. You can't do this or you can't do that because I gave you funds or reimbursed some of your tuition. These agreements are not just two paragraphs either. There are different elements that have to be put in there. And again, a good employment or labor law attorney is going to know that. The other thing I want to add, and it's not a form in itself, but remember, any document that has the word agree means that you're asking that individual to pretty much sign a contract. And unless you're a labor law attorney, you're not going to know how to put that in the correct verbiage. And remember, a tax attorney, a estate attorney, though they are not labor law attorneys, you go to an actual labor and employment lawyer. And boy, do I have a bunch of them. Good ones, too. But that's me. I'm Panty Pridemore. And you've been listening to The Human Resource.